What's up everybody, back again with another action. Next up I got the top 10 stores that don't exist anymore. So, with that being said, let's get it. Come see what's possible when we do things together. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 stores that don't exist anymore. And customers will lose one more place to peruse new books. Corporate says the closure comes as a result of changes in retail and problems posed by the pandemic. I'll go where I have to go to get what I need, I guess. For this list, we'll be looking at U.S. retail chains and stores which have closed their physical locations and gone out of business, either due to a switch to online sales or simply being no longer commercially viable for various reasons. Number 10. Circuit City. Circuit City. Oh yeah, they, they've been out of business for quite a while now. It's crazy because I used to was a was a go there all the time. Founded in 1949 under the name Ward's Company, Circuit City was one of the most popular consumer electronics stores in the United States. During their peak, the chain boasted more than 550 stores across the country, offering plenty of electronic goods and services. They even had a chance to buy out the fledgling Best Buy operation in 1988, but declined when Circuit City CEO thought they could just put them out of business. Well, that didn't work out in the long run. When 2007 rolled around, wages were being cut. They, they actually thought... Now hold on, they, they actually thought they could put Best Buy out of business. Are you serious? Locations were being closed and That's about as bad as Blockbuster, you know, was it a, not accepting a, that a offer to be bought out by Netflix. Management turnover was high. Electronic retailer Circuit City has announced it's unplugging more than 150 stores in Maryland. Nice pun there. <laughs> Alone, three locations are going out of business. By 2009, the company pulled the plug, and the days of Circuit Wait. City were okay. over. Now some she said what I think she said? Oh. Shoppers. Turnover was high. Electronic retailer Circuit City has announced it's unplugging more than 150 stores. In Maryland alone, three locations are going out of business. By 2009, the company pulled the plug, and the days of Circuit City were over. Now some customers we talked to, some shoppers, say this is just a very sad day. Number 9, A&P. The Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company. I've never even heard of this place. Existed from 1859 to 2015. God Known to dang. most customers simply as A and P, there was a time when they were a huge player in the grocery business. We built a brand new feeling at A and P. From a few retail shops selling tea and coffee in New York, the company blossomed after being acquired by George Huntington Hartford. From there, over much time, it became a full-on grocery store, which would eventually have roughly 16,000 locations. AMP pledges guaranteed value. We guarantee the quality of all our meat and deli products. Produce too are double your money back. We also guarantee the lowest advertised prices. However, by the 1970s, the stores had become conceptually stale and plagued by bad customer service. The chain did manage to have a bit of a comeback in the early aughts, but was short-lived, and it finally went under in 2015. Many customers have shopped here for years, and they feel emotional. Everybody angry. Everybody's angry. Yeah. Very bad was we got no store over here, no place. Number eight, F.W. Woolworth Company. It's May Value Day. Another company I haven't even heard of. That Woolworth, with savings for everyone. Did you know that Woolworths may have been the original inspiration for the dollar store? Founded by Frank Winfield Woolworth in 1879, it opened as Woolworths Great Five Cent Store, which sold everything for a nickel or two. Although that operation didn't last, the subsequent store became successful. I'm the new chairman of Woolworths, and I believe in 1981, we're going to offer you better value than we've ever done before. Frank brought in his brother, Charles Sumner Woolworth, and the two began a journey that would see their ideas about retail continue to be used today. Woolworths was highly successful until the 1980s, when stiff competition forced them to shift their priorities to their sporting goods division. Competition is the name of the game at Foot Locker, with the biggest selection of big names ever assembled. So whether your game is serious or social, we'll find the right shoe for you. In 2001, they became known as Foot Locker, and are still selling sporting goods today. A few dozen Woolworth stores do still continue to exist in Mexico under different ownership. Number seven. Oh, that's why I've never heard of it. Okay. 
Sam Goody. Goody, Goody, Sam, Goody got it. Goody, Goody, Sam Goody got it. Sam Goody got it. Much like many other music retailers, Sam Goody became the victim of the digital revolution in music. Founded in 1951 as a small music shop in New York City, it eventually merged with Musicland, which helped expand the brand. At its peak, the Sam Goody branded stores expanded to 800 locations and brought in several billion dollars worth of revenue. It had become almost synonymous with music retail, which held it above water for a long time. But after struggling through a handful of acquisitions and changes to its business model, the stores began to close. By 2012, most of the stores were gone or simply rebranded as FYE. Number six, Borders. Hi, I'm Jason Schwartzman. I'm Wes Anderson. We are at the flagship Borders in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Ever since Gutenberg revolutionized printing so long ago, books have been in demand. This I see, the funny thing is I didn't even know, I didn't realize this went out of business. ...to learn or enjoy stories is what eventually spawned the likes of giant bookstore chains like Borders. Operating for nearly 40 years, this bookstore saw its peak with over 500 U.S.-based stores, and even more via other brands and franchising. By the time 2007 rolled along, however, the company had begun to struggle to remain in business. Well, I hope this store can stay, because um, I frequent this store and uh, I want to support it. Several attempts were made to keep it going, but by September of 2011, the chain had come to an end with its stores closing and rival chain Barnes & Noble buying its trademark. Getting the news today. Oh. But why did I not hear about it, Cliff? It's upsetting. We tried. We tried. We gave it our best. Number five, Fry's Electronics. Remember, your best buys are always at Fry's. Guaranteed. The sale of Fry's supermarkets chain eventually spawned a completely new type of electronics store back in 1985. The intent was to make shopping for electronics a similar experience to going for groceries. Whether it was circuit boards, software, or any other kind of electronic device, Fry's was the place to get it. Uh, Fry's was famous for its unusual exteriors and motifs like the Mayan themed store here in San Jose. It was actually one of the few places you could buy raw computer parts off the shelf to assemble your PC on your own. The store. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Was ballooned in popularity, and even the aforementioned Circuit City didn't offer the same kinds of fare. It's a shame to see it go away. I mean, we basically, I grew up with, you know, going to the store a lot to. You know, buy everything from my TVs to video games, and, you know, unfortunately, they're going to have to find somewhere else to buy all that stuff now. But after decades of sometimes controversial business practices and squeezed by the COVID pandemic in 2020 and longstanding market pressures, all their stores ceased operations in February 2021. Yeah, freaking COVID, man. That, that really, like, messed up a lot of companies up. All 31 Fry stores across nine states closed effective immediately. Are you a customer? Not any longer, it would seem. <laughs> Number four, linens and things. If there is one common thread connecting many of the... Why, why does it seem like I've heard of this store, but I, I can't... ...businesses, it's that for many of them, a combination of acquisitions and management changes seems to be their undoing. Formed in 1975, this home textile and housewares big box retailer grew considerably by the time it opened its 55th store in 1983. Linens and Things, keeping America's homes beautiful through quality, selection, and 20 to 40 percent off regular prices every day. You got me though, the, the, the friggin' like, the, what was it, Jingle was back in the day, man, they were catchy as hell. Spun off as its own entity again in 1996, but then reacquired by Apollo Global Management in 2006. The company then truly began to find itself in financial difficulty. But the nail in the coffin came with the credit crisis. Possible buyers couldn't get credit to purchase the company, and now 371 stores are set to close by the end of the year. A series of losses combined with a decline of sales eventually forced the company to pull the plug on their stores by 2008, going online exclusively. Number three, Radio Shack. So much more than just a store. The best in America, Radio Shack. Nobody compares to Radio Shack. The humble beginnings of Radio Shack began back in 1921. 
The company focused its sales strategy on radio and electronics hobbyists. For decades, this gave them a lucrative market to fill, and interest in electronics eventually grew even further with the new computer and video game age. It was also Radio Shack that produced the famous TRS-80, one of the first widely available home computers. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. God dang, it was $600? Holy hell. Only at Radio Shack. But much like many other retailers, their popularity declined with the rise of online shopping and fewer hobbyists to buy their wares. Though perhaps more damaging has been the retailer's failure to attract younger shoppers. By 2017, the company had gone bankrupt and was no longer the giant retailer it once was. With a smattering of stores remaining under different ownership and eventually the brand being scooped up to attempt viability online. What? The 80s called. They want their store back. Number two, Toys R Us. Oh man, this one hurt. For me personally, this one hurt because when I was a kid, man, I used to go to Toys R Us all the time. I got my video games there. My was it my first big wheel bike. So you know, this going out of business, man, that that really hurt. Who doesn't remember wanting to be a Toys R Us kid? From toys to video games to books to bikes, this was a chain that had almost everything a child could possibly want. From bikes to friends to video games, it's the biggest toy store there is. She wins! But like many retailers over the last few decades, they struggled to keep up with the times and competition with the likes of mass market stores and online shopping. It was unprepared for what no one saw coming the dot-com era and the rise of the big box store. In 2017, the chain filed for bankruptcy and began liquidating their assets. By the middle of 2018, they had closed most of their U.S. stores, with the last two closing in 2021. Yeah, I feel like kids are going to miss out on the best store ever. I still love the store. However, you can still find Toys R Us stores across Canada and Asia. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Esprit, yet another clothing store bites the dust. So as the doors begin to close, one is left to wonder about the future of Esprit clothing and whether the iconic brand will survive a declining market. The Limited, closed physical stores and moved online only. Right away, you can tell the deals must be good because the store is already nearly empty. Everything in the store is 80% off. That even includes the hardware and the mannequins. Ames, many department stores haven't done- Oh man. I do. I remember Ames too. My aunt actually used to work there. Wasn't I? Wasn't I got my? Was it a? Like, I had a TV that I got you know, there. You know, my grandma bought me. You know, like, like the day. I think it was like either the day of. You know that they were closing or the day before. I don't. I don't remember exactly. But oh man. Shoppers at this Ames and Robinson Town Center still can't believe it's closing. I thought they were doing good. Usually I come in and gotta wait a while. The sharper image. Now you have to buy your air purifiers and nose trimmers online. We call it Ionic Breeze. And it's an air filter, but it's so different than the other air filters you may have seen. What more mojo? Context TV produces original, high quality videos on business, entrepreneurship, and politics, but from a different point of view. The battle is being fought between Netflix and YouTube. The Federal Reserve should remove all of the current board members who served during the fake account scam. If you want exclusive interviews with industry leaders, in depth media analysis, and documentaries with a fresh take on the state of business, check out Context TV. Number one. Blockbuster. I kind of figured it would be Blockbuster. One of the biggest industries to emerge from the creation of the VCR was the home movie rental business. Back to check out. 24 hour quick drop returns open late every night. Well, the perfect video store. Welcome to Blockbuster Video. Is popping up all over the country. There's one near you. At the inception of the movie business decades earlier, no one had ever expected people to want to watch their movies at home instead of at theaters. With more than 30,000 stores open globally at its commercial peak, if you wanted to rent a new release, odds are you went to Blockbuster Video. Oh, plus they have all kinds of video games for the kids. Video rentals became ingrained in our culture, and Blockbuster profited mightily. 
But as streaming services and mail-in DVD options became available over the years, the days of Be Kind Rewind were over and Blockbuster famously ceased to be. Its various partnerships folded and stores worldwide were rapidly plunged into administration. We're closing early. Its 9,000 strong chain had been reduced to one single franchise in Bend, Oregon. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch. Dang, that was it. They didn't go like into more depth yeah, for that one, but but yeah, like I said, I used to go to Blockbuster all, all the time too. That was another store I used to go to all the time. Like I'd you know mainly to rent video games. Like I just and the thing that sucks too is like the I think it was like two years before they decided to close their doors. I, I just got like a you know was it a a new membership or whatever for it. And then they closed. I was like, really? So, but I, so yeah, but like I said, that, that was their fault. Like I said, I, they had a chance, you know, was it to be, I think it was to be bought out by Netflix, but they were like, nah, we're good or something like that. Or no, they, I think they had a chance to buy Netflix or something like that, you know, and they would have been good, but they were like, nah, we're good. Yeah, we're good. All right. <laughs> But uh, anyways, if you like this video, remember to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and thanks.